There is a saying we have, damned if you do and damned if you don't. I think we've got to be very, very careful that we don't end up lambasting the freest and most generous countries. You're about to... Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today, I'll be checking out a very heated debate in which Douglas Murray is one of the speakers titled Douglas Murray shuts up Muslim girl and dismantles her case in a heated immigration debate. Without further ado, let's go. There is a saying we have, damned if you do and damned if you don't. I think we've got to be very, very careful that we don't end up lambasting the freest and most generous countries. You're about to watch Douglas Murray address an accusation thrown against Europe and by extension white people that what they do for Africa boils down to a white saviour complex. Now that's pretty shocking, isn't it? In a debate that happened years ago in Doha, the floor was opened for the audience to ask questions. One of them, a Muslim lady named Asma from Kenya, turned to Douglas and said, And do you think it's judicious for these people in Britain? For example, you talked about how Britain is giving aid to these countries in Africa. It's judicious for them to give this much money to these countries, but without even listening to their needs. So this only contributes to the white saviour complex yeah. that is currently a big issue in okay. Believe me, Before they we really get into Douglas's epic response, let me quickly jump in and define what white saviour complex means, seeing that's an epithet that's being thrown around a lot these days. The term refers to white people helping black people only to look like white saviours. The suggestion is that the helper only wants to feel good about his good deeds and does not care about the person whom he is assisting at all. Now, here is how Douglas responded to this sort of accusation. He, straight up, wasn't having any of it. Well, there is, there is a saying we have, damned if you do and damned if you don't. If it's the case that if we don't give aid, we'd be accused of not giving aid, and if we do give aid, it's a white saviour complex. I mean but then... Douglas conceded to one thing. We can all give aid better, for sure. And I just gave, in my opening remarks, what I think was a, a serious suggestion for one very good use of aid, which is to prioritise it in the region and in the neighbouring countries of people, places people are fleeing from. But, I mean, as I say, I, I, I would refuse as well to see the multifarious problems that exist in, in your own home country and sadly across the continent of Africa. Back to Douglas in a sec. Why was the lady so quick to point fingers at Europe's magnanimity for the myriads of problems plaguing her country, and by extension, the continent of Africa? Are we to be blamed for the current political instabilities, bad governments and tribal wars happening in these places? Before we proceed, kindly hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos on Douglas Murray's provocative debates. Next. Another person in the audience claims that the main reason migrants are moving to Europe is because wealth is moving out of the developing world in form of debt repayment to the developed world. Here's how Douglas responded to that. No, I don't. I don't again, I repeat the fact there are no simple answers. And if it was simply the fact that you could, I don't know, do a debt default or something and solve the whole migration issue, then, then that would be great. But it just isn't the case. Now watch as Douglas hits the nail at the head with these rhetorical questions. You think that if, if, uh, if um, for instance, all uh, African countries were allowed to default on debt, that they'd become uh, uh, um, burgeoning, uh, flourishing uh, 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 societies? You think that the problem across, for instance, sub-Saharan Africa isn't just unbelievable greed and theft by politician after politician? You think There you have it. Oh. But Douglas wasn't quite done. You think that... that that if you just wrote off the debt, that would stop being an issue and everyone would become transparent and clean in their dealings with money. I mean, the problems are much deeper than this. They're much deeper than just a, a simple solution like that. As Granted, historically, Europe colonised foreign countries for reasons ranging from persecution in their own countries to the search for riches and economic benefits. But then, it is really easy to simplify and accept biased information instead of being open-minded. It's quite untrue to believe that European countries were the only ones to conquer and colonise others. Every region has done similar atrocities against others, if you go back in time far enough. But that's by the way. Now, one of the debaters sitting across from Douglas, another anti-Europe activist, made a point which drew a resounding applause from the crowd. Something um, we call, we we call brown have. people migrants, we call white people who go abroad to work expats. This is really important. Right. However, Douglas, as if he had prepared ahead of time for her point, 
gave a response that was both fitting and truthful. Firstly, by the way, migrants versus expats, there's a very clear reason. It's expected, rightly or wrongly, that expats don't stay in the country and bring up their families and stay for generations. The assumption with migrants is, currently has been in recent generations, that they are going to stay and that it's going to be a multi-generational thing. Personally, I think calling these people refugees is according them respect that they do not deserve. In reality, most of them are actually callous invaders, whereas some refugees may intend to leave for home as soon as possible, invaders intend to stay and take over. So the present group of refugees certainly belongs to the latter, and hopes of integration are misplaced since they won't, as we can see in the Turks in Germany and the Maghreb refugees in France. No multicultural society in history ever survived for long, and typically ended up with one group massacring the other, as the most recent example of Hutus and Tutsis in Rwanda showed us. To expect otherwise is sheer arrogance or simply insanity. Next, Douglas turns to everyone on stage, throwing shade at Europeans, and asks a question that leaves the whole audience speechless. I think we've got to be very, very careful that we don't end up lambasting the freest and most generous countries. And I would just urge, as a call to, as it were, moral caution on this, urge you in this room and people watching, how many people have you made uh, citizens of Qatar from Syria? How many? Okay. You could have heard a pin drop in the room. Now, the truth of the matter is that Europeans are pacifists. We are, generally speaking, liberals in our thinking. This is why we assume that everyone is as kind, respectful and educated as we are, because we all have our heads in the sand and can't face the reality that we opened our borders to our enemies. I mean, the same people from the East and South we give money to actually hate us and our culture. I mean, let's face it. Islam hates Western liberal culture. They consider the West degenerate and pornographic, but it's too late to stop them from coming since they are already here. Worse still, many of them now have voting rights. That's game over. Now, guys, it's high time we all stood up and demand a change. What are your thoughts on this? Should Europe continue to accept so many refugees? Let us know what you think in the comments section. Whoa, 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 guys. To be told, we have to start telling the truth and giving people facts and letting people know their places. This white savior complex of a thing, believe me when I say the African countries that are receiving aid from Europe, it, it, that money is being used to develop these countries, build hospitals, schools, roads infrastructures provide basic amenities and Europeans have to feel good they have to feel proud about giving the, the, the money believe me because even if your friend asks you for money and you bo you borrow him in some way you become confident proud of yourself that you have been able to help a brother so when they give out aid they should be able to feel proud. Let me tell you, if it was the other way around, if it was Africans giving them aid, <laughs> it would have been a totally different story all over. The whole world would have heard about it. But they, they even keep their calmness, their composure, they help low-key. If it was the other way around, the whole world, it would be televised on all news channels that... This African country has given aid to this European country. Africans would have talked about it, boosted about it. So, Europeans too have each and every right to be proud, comfortable talking about how they are helping Africa. Because believe me, even with their money coming in, the greedy politicians in Africa are still not being able to put things together in their own countries. Trust me, so if that aid is being cut short, it means there is doom for Africa. Europeans keep on pumping money into African economies, but still and still, the African economy is still going down. Let's take that money aside and see. There will be total chaos. That is when you will find all Africans running to Europe. So, I support the aid that comes from them it has really helped a lot because this come as subsidies 
that stabilize prices in Africa countries. Our leaders are disappointing us and believe me when I say they will continue to disappoint us till the end of time, till thy kingdom come. Because politicians in Africa always come with one aim, fill their pocket, take care of their family. After the four years, they go, another batch comes with the same ideology. So, Africa will always depend on Europe in order to get things moving for us. It's hard to say, but it's true. So, I will beg them that instead of pumping the money into the pocket of those greedy politicians, they should find a way of helping the citizens like me. Yes, they should help us personally because all the money that they have been pumping into the pocket, the hands of the nation account does not reach the citizens at all. It's a few people that use the money for their own personal gains, share the money. That's all. I'll be waiting for you in the comment section, guys. Let's keep the conversation rolling. If you are an African like me, do you think that Europeans should feel bad because people are saying they are giving out money to African countries to help them? But in some way, it's bad. Is it, is it really a bad thing? Because I sitting here from my perspective, I know God will richly bless Europeans for the amount of money that they have pumped into African economies. Look around. All the big, big hospitals the good infrastructures, water, everything we see was done with money that came from outside. It really baffles me because African countries have good minerals like all these natural resources. But still, if money does not come out, come from outside, there, there is doom everywhere. So, I'll be waiting for your comments. Don't forget to like the video. If today is your first time, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Till we meet again next time. Love you guys. Bye.